Greetings and welcome to Fast Post. I'm Krisha Han, here to bring you the top stories and insightful analysis for March 22nd. Let's dive into the headlines. UN Security Council to vote on US resolution on Gaza ceasefire. Ethiopia to resume repatriating citizens from Saudi Arabia. Somali pirates return, adding to global shipping crisis. The news in detail. The United States will present a resolution to the UN Security Council seeking support for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza and a hostage deal between Israel and Hamas. This move aims to increase pressure on Israel to facilitate more humanitarian aid and enhance civilian protection. The resolution, developed through extensive consultations, represents a shift in the U.S. stance, which previously avoided endorsing the term ceasefire and vetoed similar measures earlier in the conflict. The proposed resolution advocates for an immediate and sustained ceasefire, lasting approximately six weeks to safeguard civilians and enable humanitarian assistance delivery. It also supports ongoing ceasefire negotiations facilitated by the U.S., Egypt and Qatar emphasizing the importance of utilizing the truce period to advance efforts for lasting peace. To be adopted by the Security Council, the resolution requires at least nine affirmative votes and no veto from the permanent members. Uganda's President Yoweri Museveni has appointed his son General Muhuzi Kainarugaba as the country's army commander sparking speculation about succession plans within the government. General Kainarugaba, previously serving as a senior presidential advisor overseeing special operations, was elevated to this new role in a late Thursday cabinet reshuffle that also saw the dismissal of five ministers. He replaces General Wilson Mbadi, who has been appointed as the trade minister. Additionally, two of Gen Kainarugaba's closest advisors were appointed as ministers in the reshuffle. The changes come amid controversy with General Kainarugaba's recent rallies across the country drawing criticism for potentially breaching military code of conduct. President Museveni, in power since 1986, has faced accusations of grooming his son for succession, although he has consistently denied such claims. Uganda is scheduled to hold general elections in 2026, adding further significance to these political maneuvers. President Museveni has given me a chance and as my fellow uh, fellow commanders were saying, I am I am somebody who's very passionate. I was very passionate about the army. You all saw me. I used to call them my soldiers. People would say, "Why are you calling them your soldiers?" They are not. No, it's because I love them. Somali pirates return, adding to global shipping crisis. As a speedboat carrying more than a dozen Somali pirates bore down on their position in the western Indian Ocean, the crew of a Bangladeshi-owned bulk carrier sent out a distress signal and called an emergency hotline. Preeta Khan has more. Pirates boarded the Abdullah after no help arrived in time, taking the captain and second officer hostage, revealed Chief Officer Atik Ullah Khan in an audio message to the ship's owners. The incident occurred off the coast of Somalia where the vessel remains anchored, becoming the latest victim in a resurgence of piracy that had seemingly been under control. The rise in pirate activity, coupled with drone and missile strikes by Yemen's Houthi militia, has escalated risks and expenses for shipping companies. Since November, there have been over 20 attempted hijackings, leading to increased costs for armed security guards and insurance premiums. Somali pirates, seizing the opportunity amid reduced naval operations off the coast, have capitalized on the distraction provided by Houthi strikes to resume piracy activities after nearly a decade of dormancy. If the illegal foreign fishing boats in our sea will not stop, our youth will have to defend their sea because they are losing their livelihoods. While the threat is not as severe as it was in the past, Concerns persist among regional officials and industry sources that the problem could escalate if not addressed promptly. Efforts to curb piracy involve interventions such as the recent interception of the Ruan by the Indian Navy, which resulted in the surrender of pirates and the safe rescue of hostages. 
Despite calls for increased international assistance, Somali President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed emphasizes the importance of enhancing Somalia's own law enforcement capabilities to tackle piracy effectively. This approach prioritizes bolstering the Coast Guard and maritime police forces rather than relying solely on international naval patrols. Incidents that took place, it's not higher level, but it can go if we do not stop while it's still uh, at infancy stage. Ethiopia is set to begin the third phase of repatriating 70,000 of its citizens from Saudi Arabia. Ethiopia's foreign ministry says the citizens are in a difficult situation in the Gulf country. The repatriations will begin in two weeks. Saudi Arabia had asked foreign workers residing in the country without legal rights to leave or face jail time. The country hosts an estimated 750,000 Ethiopians, more than half of whom are in the country illegally according to the UN Migration Agency, IOM. Human rights groups have previously said that some Ethiopian migrants have faced rights abuses in Saudi Arabia, including torture and killings. Saudi Arabia has repatriated more than 350,000 Ethiopians since 2017, according to IOM. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast. Stay updated on the latest developments. And join us again tomorrow for more in-depth coverage. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, leave a comment and share with others. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter for additional updates. Until next time, take care and have a pleasant day.